You know what, I'm supposed to be traveling to Africa right now, but for some reasons my flight was delayed and I'm making a video on this MacBook Pro after using it for two weeks. If you remember in the last video I showed you how I did the unboxing and everything, so it's been over two weeks and I'm going to tell you what I think about it. And I've tested it. When I say testing, it's not the standard test that you see most of the time with Cinebench or all the mumbo jumbo. I'm talking about my own experience, the tasks that I do every day. How does it compare to the desktop that I have here? And if you look at the desktop, it's very intimidating. You see all the lights, all the colors, the size and everything. You think it's powerful. I mean, I thought it was powerful, but then I have the MacBook Pro. I'm going to tell you what has been my experience so far, what I like about it and what I don't like about it. And I'll give you some recommendations as to what you need to select, because when you go to uh, submit an order for this computer, you have options for upgrade and other things that you can do or add to the computer. I'll tell you exactly what you may need, depending on what you do. I'll tell you who this is for. This is not for everybody. If you just read your email, go on Facebook, watch pictures and so on, you don't, you don't need this kind of power. But I've had friends reaching out asking me what I can advise so I'm going to tell you the same thing here first I'm going to give you the specs of these two computers here the desktop that I have has a CPU from Intel an i9 which is good also has 96 gigabytes of memory the graphic card is a little small from Nvidia so the MacBook that I have here this is a 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max 64 gigabytes of memory unified memory 10 core cpu 32 core gpu and 16 core neural engine these are made for hard tasks for heavy duty so you need to have something heavy to do with these computers me personally i do video editing i do photo i do programming i also do some networking lab if you don't know i have a channel called kb trainings that's where i show you everything it and all of that can be done here that's why i actually have 64 gig of ram because sometimes i need to have virtual machines and all kind of things running on this single computer so at this point there's a big question can you do me a favor what I need is simple it's free it's very easy if you like what I'm doing if you like the video so far just go down and click on like and also share the video to help the channel grow and if you want to become a doer if you want to know what I do in my free time the kind of project that I do here automation and everything please subscribe to be part of this big community so first let's talk about what I like on this new MacBook Pro first the design the design is good. When I look at it, it's a little bulky than the most recent version of the MacBook Pro, but it's good. It's good. There is a reason for it. You have some beautiful round corners over here and the keyboard is good. Even though personally, I didn't have any problem with the old keyboard. It was fine, but you know, people always like to complain. Um, it's better than the old one but the old one is still fine too so i'm just you know following the mob at the bottom you have this name of macbook pro embedded here it's beautiful you also have these four feet here that are going to help the macbook stay off your desk so that air can flow underneath it and talking about air the thermal dynamic on this computer is very good because so far i've never seen it very heated up it can get warm a little bit, but um, even the fans inside are rarely working. I mean, they work, but they don't make noise. They, they're, just, they're just quiet and it's a little warm. It won't burn you like the other uh, previous versions of Mac. The new chips are not very power consuming, so they don't heat up that much. I don't know how Apple did it, but this is a very good job because whatever task I've thrown to this computer, it, it's, it's cool, it's quiet, it's good, and I really like that. So next, let's talk about the ports. We have this SD card reader here. I usually use SD for most of my cameras, so I don't really need an adapter to use this SD card. You can just put it in here, it goes halfway in, and uh, that's all I need most of the time, unless I'm using the R5, the Canon R5 with the CF Express card. And the next thing we have is the HDMI port here. That's a good thing, but I haven't had a chance to use it because usually when I do screen mirroring, I just connect to my TV wirelessly and I've never used this laptop in a, in a desktop mode. The screens that I have, I don't want to use them with this computer because what I have here is way better. This is just like a pro display XDR in a small format. So there's no need for me to, to attach something externally. That's just me. So you may need to use it in a desktop mode, but I would ask you to 
have some beautiful uh, monitor so you can kind of keep the same experience so the MagSafe port is also back um, I also have to say that I don't use it that much because you know that you have the option to charge your your uh, MacBook using the Thunderbolt or the USB-C I don't usually carry the, the MagSafe with me because I only have to have one charger one cable I use the same cable for the MacBook for my phone for my headset and everything but if you want your computer to charge faster you need to use the MagSafe so next let's talk about the screen the screen is good it's big compared to the body of the computer because of course you have less bezel on the side with this computer here the colors are accurate the blacks are dark so there's nothing in the black it's all darkness the vibrant colors are beautiful so just like I said this is like the four thousand dollars pro display XDR in a small format for you to use and um, yeah it's definitely a good deal the notch is there but you won't see it much you get used to it and it's going to be the least of your worries i don't even notice it when i use it most of the time usually if you are in the full screen mode you don't see it at all okay now let's talk about power and efficiency this computer is powerful it's actually going beyond my expectations. So I tried to do a project. I'm talking specifically um, about video editing because that's one of the main thing that I do. So I have a project here that I did. Uh, it was shot on the Canon C7D and the Canon R5, both of them that are delivering 4K 10-bit 422 codec. And I used that same project on this computer and you can clearly see how fluid it is, how quickly you can hit play and read the video on the new MacBook Pro. And at the end, when I export the project, it exported the project in three minutes. However, when I use a desktop, first of all, it's a little laggy when you try to play. If you have multiple clips to export the file, which is a 4K H.264, the desktop exported the file in nine minutes. So the MacBook, as small as it is, did the job three times faster. That's impressive. So talking about mobility, I cannot imagine that this kind of power can be brought anywhere. I can go in the middle of nowhere and do anything I want. I can be in a plane. I can be at the airport. Actually, I said at the beginning that I missed my flight to Africa. I mean, it was uh, postponed. I can do anything when I'm flying. And to get to Africa, it takes me 22 hours. Can you imagine what I can do in 22 hours? So having all of that packed into this small MacBook Pro, it's definitely a delight. And I don't know what Apple did, but this is a revolution when it comes to laptops and small format. I heard that Intel is going or has released a new chip, which might compete with this one here. So, so it's all good for us. It's good for us consumers because we have competition. We have companies like Apple coming up with revolutions like this and other companies like Intel and AMD are trying to catch up. But I think for them to really catch up to what Apple did, it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot of redesign in their chip architecture and um, yeah good luck with that the battery is good it usually lasts for me around five hours and that's enough for me that's the time i need to go out and do whatever and also depends on what you do on the computer five hours if i'm doing heavy video editing but usually if you don't do much it can uh, last longer than that now i'm going to tell you what i don't like about this macbook seriously i i took a lot of time i really thought about it i, I couldn't find anything it delivers the power is there the efficiency is there the portability everything is just great and when you compare it to those to some of those big computers like the mac pro i've seen people online like mkbhd he showed his uh, mac pro which can be configured up to fifty thousand dollars of purchase price and when he compares the mac pro to the macbook pro the difference is just mind-blowing i mean it's of course behind the macbook pro but not so far behind so i really think that apple could have been selling this for ten thousand dollars and people will still buy it I will still buy it because what I get is just beyond what I would expect for $4,000. But uh, there is something that I will have to tell you in the next video. I'll have to return this unit here for something that uh, that I noticed not related to Apple. I mean, of course, it's Apple, but uh, it's not something that I think a lot of customers are noticing at the big scale. So it's just me and this unit here. So I'll tell you that in the next video. I don't want to make this video very long. So what do I recommend? As I said, depending on what you do, if you are not a professional, if you just need a computer, if you are a student, if you want just to do some notes to go to read your emails, you can buy the MacBook Air. You can buy any other MacBook before this one here. It will do the job. But if you are a pro, if you need some power, some efficiency, even if you start with the 14 inch 
16 gig of RAM, you will still be fine. If you do a lot of tasks uh, simultaneously, you may need to upgrade to the 32 gig or even to the 64, just like I said for myself, because I'm going to have a lot of virtual machines and things running on here. So that's, uh, that's something to think about. But depending on how deep your pocket is, you can add all the upgrades just like I did. This one cost me $4,000 and I do not regret it. I think this was money well spent because I'm very efficient now and I can really feel it because I don't want to be here to edit. All right, guys, those were my thoughts on the new MacBook Pro, the 16 inch that I have here. And um, yeah, if you have any question, reach out, leave it in a comment. Don't forget to like the video and share it. And um, yeah, I'll keep working on it. And if there's anything, I'll bring it back to you. And if you want to see, I told you I'm going to Africa. So if you want to see my trip, I just want to document it, just like a vlog. Uh, I think I'm going to post the video when I'm back in about a week. Uh, if you don't want to miss it, just go ahead and subscribe to receive a notification. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye.